Harold Reynolds from MLB Network. Good to see you again, on, HR. Man. How you been? Good, you? You don't age at all. Yeah, I do. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. You don't at all. Well, you, you look know. the same like the first day yeah. I met you, Harold. Do you remember oh, the first day? You. you don't remember the first day I met you. All right, I got to hear this. <laughs> first day I met Harold Reynolds, okay, I was... Can you give us a year? 1994. Pre-SPN wow. for you. Yes. Okay. Okay. I was working uh, for the Medill News Bureau because it was with the <laughs> Northwest University Medill School of Journalism and uh, the Orange County News Channel. I don't know if it exists still anymore. It might. Oh, wow. I was okay. playing for the Angels. You are playing for the Angels. Yeah. And you came through Baltimore and they called up, said, we want to get a, a we want to get a, a feature on Harold Reynolds. Would you go and do that? I did. And you were you were kind you definitely didn't want to talk to me, but you were def you, de you definitely didn't want this cub reporter, if you will, because I don't know if, I don't know if the season was going very well at the time for you. Uh, if it was early on, no, it we was struggled. It was early. right around May. Yeah, so, so I was month scuffling. Two, you were scuffling. Oh, so, big time! So here comes this kid. By the way, full head of hair at the time. There you go. <laughs> showing up, and I was asking all those questions. And uh, you were kind about it, and, and then you were kind of like, okay, let's wrap it up, kid. I got that look. I got that sense from you, you know at the time. You I remember from that year? What? Uh, we're four games out. We battle all the way back. We're in mid-May. Mm -hmm. Now, our pitching coach, Dick Bosman, every time he'd come to the mound, he'd say basically the same thing. Ooh, tough situation. Use all your pitches. And Cal <laughs> would be so chapped. And I could hear Cal, every time the catcher would put a sign down throughout the year, he'd be going, No! Or, you know, if it was a pitch he didn't think they should be throwing at that right. time. So we're four out. Bosman comes out, says his whatever to Ben McDonald and goes back. And I'm ben walking McDonald's. back second. He yeah. was Ben McDonald's pitching. Yeah. So I walk back second, and uh, you, uh, you, Chris you, Hoyles goes back to. This is in Baltimore. Yeah, in 93. Correct. 93, so I you're said playing 94. for the Orioles at yes. the time, right? Okay, and that's why so, they wanted to feature on you because, they, you know, you're yeah. Mr. Southern California, been, too. That's yeah, it. So, okay. so I'm playing with the O's. This is 93, actually, but. Mm -hmm. That's a good story. So okay, good forget enough. the facts. It's ultimate facts. Sure. Yeah. All right. So, uh, <laughs> Hashtag. so Cal mm -hmm. uh, comes to the mound. We're all at the mound, mm -hmm. and we're going back, and I hear this whistle. <whistles> and I turn around. Cal's at the mound with Ben McDonald, the pitcher. Mm -hmm. Hoyles, our catcher's gone back. I come out to the mound. We come back up there, and Cal goes, I'm calling all the pitches. Fastball, curveball, split. So the head was fastball, chest was curve. And the legs were split. Cal standing there at shortstop stand, was touching those. So we go back to our positions, and we're looking at Cal. Instead of looking at the catcher and the pitcher, mm -hmm. we're looking at Cal. Hoyles is in his crouch looking out at short. I'm at second looking at Cal. Third base was looking at Cal, and he's giving the pitches. How'd it work out? It worked out pretty good. <laughs> so the next year, the year you're talking about, 94, is what yeah. I thought about all okay, this. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm playing for the Angels. Okay, now we're right. And okay. uh, we're playing against Baltimore, and I strike out the end of the inning. And I'm going to my position, and Cal jogs by and goes, who do you think called that pitch? <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good That's stuff. what he says to you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who do you think called that pitch? Do you think Cal could manage? Oh, no doubt. Baseball? No doubt. So why doesn't he get in a shot here? Because he well, definitely wants one, doesn't he? I think recently he's talked about wanting to do it. With the Nationals? They yeah. went Dusty Baker instead, but they didn't even knock on his door, I don't think. Well, yeah, I don't know how legit it was. Um, I know he wanted to own a team first, and that okay. was kind of his plan. I think he hung around hoping he might get the Orioles, but Peter Angelos isn't going anywhere yet. You know, so... Um, and then the next option would be, be managing. But he'd be great, no doubt about it. Well, if the if the Marlins are worth $1.6 billion, I would suggest Cal get into managing. <laughs> yes. You're not kidding. You're not kidding. Or have some really good friends. You can throw in some money. You're making a lot of money. I've got – hold cash. on. I haven't hit the ATM in a couple days. There you go. Uh, but whatever I got on me, I'll, I'll, I'll chip in. in from a very minority stake. <laughs> Harold Reynolds here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. What is this uh, sweepstakes? You and – that's what you're out here for the Grammys? You and oh, Malai? Mal Mal yes. What is this? What's going on? Awesome. Well, MLB Network mm -hmm. teamed up with the Grammys, mm -hmm. and uh, they presented a sweepstakes to us. So, so Mary Beck, who's one of our VPs, mm -hmm. and, and Lorraine Fisher, who's one of our B VPs as well, come to me and say, hey, you want to go to the Grammys? I'm like, heck yeah. <laughs> so Malar and myself, we get to bring our wives, go to the Grammys, and two people won, mm -hmm. and they get to come and join us. So we'll walk the red carpet, and we'll sit down, we'll watch the shows, uh, 13,000 people got online for about two weeks no kidding. and tried to, to win the contest. And we had 
for about the two week period of time, we're playing all the nominees music on our shows. Mm -hmm. So we worked out pretty good. So, so I'm here. So who are you looking forward to seeing? You know who, who you hope you run I into? I went on this about red 10 years ago yeah. to the Grammys, and the live performances are incredible. They are incredible. Incredible. They are great. So it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing whoever. It's, uh, there's no one particular. No, but recording you get to that artist. level. Okay. It's amazing. Now, are you hoping that uh, the Taylor Swift wins an award and somehow, somewhere? Kanye runs up there, <laughs> acts crazy. <laughs> I don't There's know if this is going to happen. There's going to be some shenanigans. We'll see. Something that's that my favorite. Well, Stevie Wonder kind of hinted the other day that he may not be blind. Did you hear about this? What? Now, hold he's on got a, a huge announcement that he's going to make. Stevie Wonder is making a huge announcement this year. He talked about how he landed a plane one time. Well, he's there picked is, up a microphone. Now that you, you know, know, you know that, 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 we, is, that is a, one of the hugest a long time. conspiracy theories that has been out there. That there is there was when, when McCartney and... Stevie Wonder performed at the White House, and he's on keyboards, and McCartney's running around and knocked over a microphone. He caught it. That Stevie Wonder grabbed. I mean, seriously. He caught like, it? Yeah, like you going in the hole. He wow. grabbed it. Are you serious? Come on now. Stop he, it. He, he is yeah. making a big announcement. He, and everybody like, thinks it's good. Oh, by the way, I, I can see, or I've been able to see the whole now time. Let me, ask, let me ask you this. Come on. Come on. Say Stevie comes out and says, you know what? Um, I can actually see, blah, blah, blah. This was just something that people came up with, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. Would that affect the way you view his musical career? Oh, you throw superstitions out the window. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, man, you don't. I what mean, do you mean? Why not? Don't you worry about a thing. He's been living a lie for like 40 years. <laughs> he told TMZ, quote, I flew a plane once. Well, actually twice. I actually landed the plane. Well, I mean, there's autopilot. Oh, come on. You think he's flying a big Boeing? He's I'm, some... I'm not Oh, you're by himself? He's not sitting there in a cockpit by himself. Would oh, it, he's going Harrison Ford. Would it Ford. affect the way you thought of Stevie Wonder? Hmm. No. No, Stevie Wonder is un unassailable to me. Uh, that's an interesting question. He's been <laughs> pretending to be blind all this time. He has not been I pretending to be blind. I don't want pretending. to hear this. This is the dumbest thing ever, although I do believe it. <laughs> Ray Charles' uh, widow also going to speak. Uh, now stop. Everybody no. just pipe down. <laughs> We're back in 60 seconds. We're going to talk some baseball with you. Right, some, cool. Some of these rules, man. Oh, man. Tell okay. me about it. Okay. We'll get into We're it. We're back in 60 seconds here with Harold Reynolds right. in a moment. Willis Reed not being in. Stop it. I'm telling Kirk you right Gibson now. faking the home run Stop. Michael Jordan, his free throws blinded. Yeah. Yes. That's oh, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, he had 98.6 he 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 temperature the whole time. <laughs> uh, or, or Kurt Schilling really was bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> from his side. He has a giant scar That's pretty good on his ankle. Yes! That That's a good one. Hey. Mic drop. That's a good one. Come on, Nat. Make That's all the jokes. I bleed mean, the pinstripes he's wearing his Red Sox the hat. He's still That's blown 3 0. It'll be over. I can't top that. <laughs> They'll always have blown 3 0. Howard Reynolds here on the Rich Eisen Show. Are we really putting a, a player on second base to start Man. extra innings in Major League Baseball? They've, Is that a possibility for it's real? It's a possibility. You know, they've discussed a lot of things with trying to speed the game up. I don't like it. I just can't see starting a second base. And here's why. Baseball is great because of all the records, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what we always talk about. But you can't throw somebody a second base. You just can't. So, I mean, why are they doing it? Just because well, the, speed the 15... Up I know that, but, I mean, when a game goes extra innings, it's just, you're, everybody's just got to fasten your seatbelts. That's it. I mean, yeah. I'd understand to say we need to come up with something for the paying customers for a nine inning game. We gotta we gotta figure out yeah. a way to get them out of there on average three hours. Okay. Yeah. That somebody shows up to a ballpark at seven o'clock or six thirty for a first pitch at seven oh five, you're gonna be out of there by ten o'clock on average. Nine forty five would probably right. be the goal if we could do that East Coast time or anywhere obviously where well, a seven oh five start. But once it's an extras I mean, well, smoke actually, them if you extra got them. innings, the ratings go up. That's what's been proven. Yeah, we, you know, that's right. crunch time. People are paying attention. But um, I, I do think we have to address putting the ball in play. There's too many swings and misses. The, the game's not moving How does that enough. get addressed? So I, I think the 22nd clock that we've talked about, throw a pitch within 20 seconds. You know, you, you can't walk around, try to figure it out. How long does it take you to figure out, okay, he just threw me a slider. Will he throw me a fastball here? Mm -hmm. You know, get in the box. And if you're giving signs, generally what happens with a uh, third base coach giving you signals, if a ball's fouled off, 
that's when you go look at the third base coach because everybody's looking at the ball, right? And now he gives you your, your signs real quick. So there's a lot of ways to speed up the game. I think what's happening with 245 Park is they're seeing the game not being played like the game was supposed to be played. We got shifts all over the field. We got guys that don't run, can't put the ball in play. Strikeouts are more prevalent than base hits. And nobody wants to get a man over. They're almost instituting a rule to say, this is how the guys, this is how the game's supposed to be played. And I don't know if they're gonna miss it with that. So to me though, you as somebody who had base dealing as part of his game when you played, wouldn't you know if the clock shot if the pitch clock's down to one or two seconds? Take off. Yeah. Great point. I never thought about that. Hey, no. Wow. So, rich. so where do you put that clock? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. How does that work? Because I'm, I'm off. I know, I know he can't come over, right? Unless what? Now we're coming well, up. Well, now we're now you got action though. As soon as the ball's moving, maybe it's a throw to the so, base. So you've got. So, so you have 20 thing. seconds to at least get the ball out of your glove yeah. to some spot. Get it moving. Then we'll have to fix. See, we're spitballing here. We're trying to. Yeah. We're trying to figure it's this good. thing out. But also, I just look. Um, then. I don't mind the, the uh, four pitch intentional walk being eliminated. Just sending someone. Why? Because I, I, that's old school. That's though. High I mean, just school, put. Though. I know that, but but it's just like, why do I got to sit well, there and watch? But ball because one, how many two? times you watch an American League game? Do you actually intentionally walk anybody? Not many times, but so, just like basically just have somebody go up yeah, four and the guy it, just doesn't. But eat. my argument is, it takes that pitcher out of his rhythm. So many times, guys cannot lob a ball, and now they come back and try to throw a strike. He may not be able to do that. So, but if we are needing to cater to a fast, faster paced world, we got to do something. That right? would be one of the first ones. That's what I'm saying. That would that, that one, and then, so. and then uh, the pitch clock raising the strike zone. What are we talking about here? Well, Panel basically, it's just, the, the rule is the hollow of the knee, yes. meaning the bottom part of your knee is what umpires are calling. Yes. And they want to raise it above the knee. So, what happens if you raise the strike zone? They're hoping guys will be a little more aggressive. And pitchers will get balls in the strike zone where guys are going to hit it. I have a feeling, at least for me as a hitter, I didn't hit the high ball real well. So I liked it when the ball was, was brought down. But most guys are not high ball hitters. And so you can see, I think strikeouts go up. When you raise the zone, everything's got to go up. And so we'll see. Well, he, and I know I speak for Brockman over there um, when I, I say this here. Poor guy. Okay, no, here's the thing. That why why are we why are we messing with anything, right? We yeah. just saw we had a poll question here the other day after the national championship game after Deshaun Watson won that thing with damn near no time left against Alabama. The whole country was watching, and we had a poll question saying what was the most exciting finish of the year? Was it Kyrie, Kyrie Irving's three pointer in Game Seven of that three one comeback for the Cleveland Cavaliers? Was it the last second buzzer beater shot? of Villanova beating North Carolina. That's never happened to end an NCAA tournament or an NBA Finals was a buzzer beater. We've never seen that before. Was it the national championship game that the whole country had just seen, or was it Game 7 of the World Series, and Game 7 of the World Series won it? Yeah. And so baseball Hmm. is in a position now. To take over. Well, I'm not saying to take over. (laughs) Hold on a second on that. But what I'm saying is that that it's in a position right now of – on the upswing of an of a popularity yeah. that maybe we shouldn't touch this thing here. Well, you're preaching to the choir. My, my argument is this. Look, we're in sports. You can go to basically any event you want to go to, right? We're fortunate enough to be able to do that. And so those that work in the sports industry are the only ones complaining about the time of game. You know, and, and if I'm the little kid growing up in Oregon like I did, and I bought a ticket to a San Francisco Giant game, and it's July 8th, I want that game to be five hours and 15 innings. It's the only game I'm going to. Right. So that's the fan I'm a little concerned about, that we're on TV so much, and we get polarized with everything that we are able to do that we lose sight of, of a lot of the fans of those. I'm going one time this summer. I get to go two games. You know, I don't think they're as concerned about – that game was three hours. It was four hours as much as we are that do it every day. Well, the one thing I would fix if I was asked um, is the thing that I I don't hear a complaint about time of game. I am hear complaints about start time of game. Yeah, that, that some of these World Series games, it's ridiculous when they that's start. That's what was great about the Super Bowl. Well, that's and I was about to bring that up. The Super Bowl starts every year 20 minutes after 6 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah. And some kids might have to go to sleep or it's just like, screw it. I'm going to let my kids stay up. 
for the Super Bowl. We know, although we know some people who put their kids to sleep at 28 to three and then woke them up. Yes. But it, the NFL puts its marquee event on at times playoff games. At times, there's one that does start at eight o'clock on a Saturday night on on wild card and divisional weekend. That that's one thing I would change. But that's something like why can't we start some of these games at six o'clock? But then you have shadows, and I understand the game. Yeah. But it's not I just. I wouldn't that. mind playing a day game, and I know it, that double we're headers, double to, to ratings and would, all that. Do players not like double headers? Is that would they go for some double like Sundays I think players in, would go in for June, double July? If they knew they were going to have another day off, clearly, I, I think that would happen. But the postseason, I, my my fondest memories as a youngster was sneaking to the janitor's office and watching a World Series game that started in the afternoon, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I'm growing up on the West Coast, so it's 10 o'clock and it's at school or something like that. And those are things that I remember. Uh, today, you know, my kids don't get to see the end of a World Series game. They're they're knocked out, you know? So, And sometimes I feel like I'm ready to go to sleep. Well, some of these, because these games go... And, I, and, and seriously, honestly, I, I, that was one of the best things about the Super Bowl, it started at 6.20, and it was like, wow, it's 3 o'clock on the West Coast, it's 6 o'clock out East, and you could see the full game, and it was like 9.30, 10 o'clock when it ended. Last thing, too, though, where are the star players here also? Yeah. Okay? Like, let's get let's get some of these guys calling into shows like this one, calling well, into shows I, all, I'm with you all over the country. Let's get, I mean, we love, Josh Donaldson is one of our favorite guests that we've ever had here yeah. in two years, and who... Who knows about him sitting in Arizona? If, if Goldschmidt was, came on that one time. Yeah, they, they, he, we yeah. thought he was like he's like Greta, Gar- he's like Greta yeah. Garbo. He's like well, the Garbo of sports. Was, if there was one thing I would change in baseball, and this is a lot with the players' union, and maybe now we got another extended agreement. Yeah, we have to get the players more accessible. No question. I, I really believe that. I, I'm as far as a guy makes a great play in a game, an inning later, let's talk to him. He's not hitting. He's not doing it. You're sitting in the dugout. How'd you make that play? What happened? Let him engage. Would they be up for that, though? Field. Probably not. That's a problem. That somebody's got to make him ready for that. My problem is you look at the greatest video we have for baseball. Like right now, I turned on the NFL Network the other day. Thank you. You're welcome. I watch them all the time. Okay. And they're running the Super Bowl back, and you're hearing, you're hearing Tom Brady call plays. And you're hearing him tell guys, go over here, go over there. And even last year, you had you know all this stuff. You hear all these guys mic'd up. The last time we had a great mic conversation in baseball was when Sparky Anderson's talking to Kirk Gibson when he's with the Tigers, not the Dodgers, and he's saying, they don't want to pitch to you. Mm-hmm. You know, and Dick Williams is talking to Goose Gossers, and he's saying, no, I'm going to go get him. And Gibson hits a home run. And that was 84. Come on, guys. We got to get we got to get that. And that's more, I, I, I feel, more on the union than necessarily on the baseball Op side of 245 Park. I know Tony Petiti's been pushing that forever. We got to get sound in the game mm-hmm. to make it more interesting mm-hmm. for fans. Harold Reynolds, great to see you here. Enjoy the Grammys, and I appreciate you sitting here because maybe because your wife's there, you're not thinking like, oh, I can't wait to see Rihanna. I can't wait to see the. <laughs> it's okay. She's you were like, ah, there's some, no, I'm, I'm just excited She's to be at the Grammys. TV, but <laughs> good to see you. Enjoy the Grammys. All right, buddy. Don't Thank be a stranger. You. Don't be appreciate a stranger. Harold Reynolds here right. on the Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.